So, anybody ever been fisted? <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, I actually had a pretty good start to the set, but I realized like somebody just threw a fucking bomb to the stage. Um, don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> I'm just gonna put this down. There's only one natural thing I can do in this situation, which is put this bomb on. Uh, so. <laughs> Anyway, um, I wanted to start this set with something that I find very funny, which is um, current commentary on international events. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about the Winter Olympics. So this year is happening the Winter Olympics, for, which of you, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the Olympics, but it's in the winter. Um, and my floor on 4th Evans this year has been um, watching the Olympics in the lounge. And I wanted to go watch it with them and bond with them, but then I realized, no. Um, I actually did try to get into the Olympics this year, but I just um, couldn't relate to the characters. <laughs> they have like, um, what's the word? Drive, ambition, a desire to succeed in life. Um, but yeah, I decided that instead of watching the Olympics, I would seek entertainment in other forms, which um, I decided would be waggling my dick in front of a mirror. <laughs> like so. Um, and I've actually been doing this since my junior year of high school. I think it promotes body positivity. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, as you can probably know, this is actually a pretty um, problem-free practice for me to do, <laughs> except for the fact that there are a lot of problems. Um, so I actually have a pretty recent Inter uh, problem with this practice. So imagine this. It's me, freshman year here, living in Goodhue, fall term, at the innocent age of 18, and I'm just standing in front of the mirror, you know, <laughs> and I hear the door open, and I realize that my roommate is walking in. So I stop mid swing. Full circle, um, and I just start panicking, and then to top it all off, it's parents weekend, and he was crying because his parents didn't love him enough to come, and I can just say that um, my smooth alabaster white flesh was not what he needed to chew up, um, so we make direct intense eye contact for about a minute, it's like this. <laughs> and he just walks out the room really fast, in a hurry, still crying. Again, parents don't love him. <laughs> and um, we didn't talk after that, but I think I can say with 100% uh, certainty that we left thinking the same thing, which is, um, why the fuck is there a mirror in the Goodie kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, I'm going to continue this with a, another nude conundrum, because those happen a lot in the clusterfuck that is my life. Um, so, this was my junior year of high school. I was um, with my first boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, I'm single, um, I live in 4th Evans. You can just knock on my door, I'll be there, because I'm lonely. Um, and we, I was staying over at his house. Um, after a school dance with some friends, and we made the decision that um, my that our friends would stay in his room while we stayed in the playroom. Now, I haven't read Fifty Shades of Grey, but <laughs> the irony in the name of that place does not elude me. Um, and so we were laying in the bed together, and we were doing, and we decided we would do what all the cool teens were doing, which was have gay sex. <laughs> so, we commence our gay sex together, and in the process of that, I do end up laying on top of him, like so. And in the pro and I hear the uh, door, what sounds like a door opening, and since I am dumb as shit, more on that later, um, I don't think of it. But it turns out that the sound that I heard that sounded like a door opening was in fact a door open. <laughs> His sister, who was um, not aware that I was in the same room, sleeping in the same bed as him, because his family is, as the kids call it, Republican, <laughs> um, wanted to play a fun prank on her brother. 
And so she comes in with a glass of water and throws it onto him, and or what she thought was him, because I was on top. So I jump out of the bed, bare-breasted, and I just make another direct, intense eye contact. Again, example. And afterwards, I don't know, like, if she panicked or something because she didn't know how cool as shit her brother was for having gay sex. Um, but she just looks me dead in the eyes and says, my grandmother died in that bed. And, and um, normally this would serve as um, a boner killer, but we were too cool to have respect for the dead. So we, and once we reached the event horizon and finished, we decided that we would um, go to sleep. And as I was sleeping that night, I had this dream. And I was sitting on the same bed in the playroom, and I saw this old woman who looked suspiciously Republican. She came up to me, looked me dead in the eyes, introduced herself as the, um, as the grandmother. And she said, I saw that you were having gay sex in the bed that I died in, and I just wanted to say, up high, you're cool as <laughs> shit. Um, so I'd like to tell everybody about a um, social cause that I've been putting a lot of emotional energy behind, which is the destigmatization of pooping. <laughs> um, specifically the fact of being late for class because you were pooping. Um, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> So like, there's two things that you can do when this happens. You can walk in and say, oh, I, was, um, I wasn't paying attention, my, I slept under my alarm. But then the teacher leaves thinking, oh, it's their fault. But I think we all know that the call of the porcelain throne heeds to the desires of no man. <laughs> um, or you can take the second option, which is what I usually take, which is um, not going to classes for the rest of the week. <laughs> um, and I think this dynamic really needs to change, mainly because I'm failing. Um, I think I should be able to march into my Chinese class and say, one last year, I'm sorry I'm late, I was taking a shit. And that's why I'm 45 minutes late. <laughs> In fact, I really think you should be commending me for the emotional and physical strength it took for me to walk through these doors. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, um, as you guys can tell, I'm Caucasian, white, alabaster, um, and in my 19 years of being a Caucasian, I have been able to tell that we as a people have a very strange fascination with the idea of middle names. <laughs> so I, um, when I tell people I don't plan on giving my kids middle names, one, because I don't plan on having kids because they're gross. <laughs> Two, I just think they're kind of outdated and don't make sense. Why people just freak out? They're just like, but, but you have to. How will they like know their names? And I'm like, their first name. <laughs> and then they say, but what if they want to go by a different name? And I say, okay. <laughs> I can't stop them. <laughs> um, but I might be a bit biased in this because I do have a bit of a traumatic youth experience dealing with my own middle name. For those of you that don't know, my middle name is Wayne, spelled W-A-Y-N-E. But up until sixth grade, I was convinced that it was spelled W-A-I-N because the first word I heard that sounded like that was rain. You know, I thought phonics would have my back. <laughs> and so I, as I said, I discovered in sixth grade when I had this complete hard ass of a teacher, she had all these really weird, oddly specific rules that made no sense. And one of them was that on every test, you had to write your full name, first, middle, last. Um, and on our first test, I was, um, I turned in my test earlier because I was that bitch. <laughs> and she just looks at it and says, loud enough for the entire class to hear, um, that's a really interesting way to spell Wayne. I've never seen it spelled like that. And normally I would like not question this and just think that this teacher's riding my ass. But then I remembered something really important about this teacher. She was my mother. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it really says a lot about my personal development as a person, that instead of taking me to the privacy of our shared home and telling me, hey, this is actually how you spell your middle name, she decided to call me out in front of God, Jesus, and my entire sixth grade to tell me that I was stupid as shit. And honestly, what a fucking icon. Um, 
you know, I don't, I think like my sense of humor is something I've ha inherited from my mother. Um, but another thing I've inherited from my mother is the fact that we are both dumb as shit. <laughs> um, a product of her being dumb as shit is the fact that she's extremely gullible. And I being, you know, 19, take advantage of that. Sometimes I will just call her and say, guess where I just got pierced? And give her the hint that it's below the chin. And then I just hang up and go and grab it. Um, it is really useful because I can get away with a lot of stuff. So it goes like, a, no mom, I don't drink, I don't do any drugs, I've never had sex, I'm not trying on your clothes at night, no I didn't rip your dress and burn it in the kitchen, no I'm not selling your hair to the guy down the street, I don't know how you have a buzz cut now. Um, but as much as I like to um, ride my mom's ass about being dumb as shit, I have to acknowledge I also am dumb as shit. Um, as a result of this, I had a lot of very early first week blunders at Carlton. Um, one of them had to deal with the um, ultimate frisbee team cut. Which, uh, for those of you watching at home, apparently they're quite good. <laughs> um, but anyway, I would always hear people say like, oh, are you on cut? Or, um, oh, I'm on cut. And as some of you are probably realizing, that sounds like they're saying they're uncut. <laughs> as an uncircumcised. <laughs> And like, I think that's a reasonable like mistake for me to make. But where the dumbest shit partness comes in is the fact that I just did not question it. I just assumed people in Minnesota were very forward about the state of their foreskin. And so I would just introduce myself saying, I'm Connor, he him his pronouns, I'm a freshman, I do not I am circumcised. <laughs> General um, another um, early blunder that I had in my time at Carlton was that I thought Stevie P and Stephen Paws cancer were different people. So during New Student Week, I saw this guy named Stevie P who pranced around looking like a magical hot guy. <laughs> I would get these long emails from Stephen Paws Cancer that just read like a grumpy uncle. Like, I don't know. I feel like if I was from like a different state of mind, I might like think he's just putting on a public persona, he only cares more about image, he just doesn't care about how students actually feel. You know. So, but yeah. Um, I think I'm going to end this set with a bit of fun commentary on a common linguistic phrase. I noticed the other day, one of my friends said, oh, I'm born and bred in Chicago. And I realized that when somebody says they're born and bred in a place, that's the most socially acceptable way to tell somebody a place where your parents have fucked. <laughs> um, anyway, Rebecca Chin is next. Her parents fucked in Hattiesburg. <laughs>